All right, let's look at this projectile motion question from November 2015. It's a two ball question. We'll deal with the first ball first. Ball A is projected vertically upwards at a velocity of 16 meters per second from the ground. Ignore the effects of air resistance. Use the ground as zero reference. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say up is positive. Okay. It says, calculate the time taken by ball A to return to the ground. Now, ball A left the ground going upwards. So if up is positive, its initial velocity is positive 16. And if it's going to return to the ground, we know that the ball has symmetrical motion. So what happens is the speed with which the ball leaves your hand is the speed with which it returns to your hand or the ground as the case may be but it is in the opposite direction so the sign changes so the final velocity will be negative 16 and a because up is positive is minus 9.8 so if we look at all the formulas here we want the time taken by ball a this one is the easiest formula to use so VF equals VI plus A delta T. So negative 16 equals positive 16 minus 9.8 delta T. So negative 32 equals minus 9.8 delta T. So delta T equals uh, 3,265 seconds, which we can write as... 3,27 seconds. Okay, now it says sketch a velocity time graph for ball A. So you know the velocity time graph is always a straight line because the gradient of the velocity time graph is the acceleration and the acceleration is constant. Show the following on the graph. The initial velocity of ball A, that's easy, that's positive 16 given in the question. The time taken to reach the highest point of the motion, that will be half of the total time because remember symmetry of motion so over here is half of the total time and if you've still got the number in your calculator you will end up with 1,23 seconds and the time taken for the ball to return to the ground that's the 3,27 so if we draw the axes on the vertical axis is the velocity in meters per second Okay, and in the horizontal axis, we have time in seconds. So we know that uh, it is always a straight line graph, and we said up is positive. Remember, up is positive. So if up is positive, the acceleration is downwards. We get a straight line like this. So this time over here is going to be 3,27. This time over here is going to be 1,23. This, they didn't ask for it, but there's no harm. This is negative 16, but this they need. This is positive 16. And there is your graph completed. Okay, seven of the marks, more than half. So now I'm going to rub all of this out, okay, so that we can do the next part because the next part is harder. So let us rub out everything that I've put here. Okay. So now, if we look at the second part of the question, it says to you, one second after ball A is projected upwards, a second ball B is thrown vertically downwards at a velocity of 9 meters per second from balcony, 30 meters above the ground. Refer to the diagram. So there we go. There's ball B coming down, and here's ball A going up. It says to you, calculate how high above the ground ball A will be at the instant the two balls pass each other. So we know that if the two balls are passing each other, it's the same moment in time and it is the same displacement because they're occupying basically almost the same place. The problem here is ball B is going down, ball A is going up. So if we were to have a look here, if you have a look, the total distance, ball B starts up here, okay, and ball A starts down here and they are 30 meters apart. So if we say... For instance, they are meeting randomly over here at this point, okay? Ball A will have displaced upwards a distance, we could call it X, but because it's a vertical displacement, we can call it Y. Ball A has traveled this distance, Y. Ball B, on the other hand, in order to get there, has displaced downwards this distance here, okay? So by maths, if you have a look, the total distance is 30, and this distance is y, so this is 
30 minus y. Okay, but we have to think about ball B. Ball B is going downwards, but we said up is positive. So if we look at the displacement of ball B, okay, the displacement of ball B, the magnitude of the displacement is 30 minus y. But ball B is displacing downwards. So if you displace downwards and up is positive, this becomes minus 30 minus y. So this is not a happy state of affairs minus bracket 30 minus y. So if we put the minus into the bracket, we end up with y minus 30. So that is ball B's displacement when up is positive. If we look at the delta T, if we say ball A's delta T is delta T, okay, ball B's delta T, the delta T for ball B is going to be the delta T of ball A, but it left your hand one second after ball A, so it has been traveling one second less time. So it will be delta T subtract one. So we've now got an expression for the displacement for ball B and we've got an expression for the time for ball B. And we've got one for ball A, which is much simpler because going upwards, it's delta T and Y. So the problem is now we've got two unknowns and you know that happily when we have two unknowns, we always make two equations. So we're going to use this one over here because this one over here has got the things that we know. So for ball A, okay, remember up is positive. Ball A delta Y equals VI delta T plus a half A delta T squared. So delta Y is delta Y for ball A. We agreed from this diagram here. VI for ball A was 16. Okay. And then we don't know delta T, but we know that one's got delta T. We, called, we said ball A could have delta T. And then this one here, a half a delta t squared. So a half of 9.8 is 4,9, but it's going to be negative because up is positive, minus 4,9 delta t squared. Okay, and this is where we have to stop with ball A. This is everything we know about ball A. So now let's go and do it for ball B. Okay, so let's try over here. See if I can keep it neatly in here, but I don't think so. Okay, let's not put it over there. Let's do it maybe, let me do it where, let's see if we'll fit it here. Okay, ball B. Okay, we're gonna use the same formula, delta Y equals VI delta T plus a half A delta T squared. Okay, but now we know delta Y is actually delta Y minus 30. So we're going to go delta Y minus 30 equals VI. What was VI? The ball's initial velocity according to the question was 9, but it's downwards. So it's minus 9. And now delta T, what was delta T? Delta T was delta T minus 1. So we have to put in here delta T minus 1. Okay. And then plus a half a delta t squared. A half a is going to be minus 4,9. Delta t is delta t minus 1. So sad to say delta t minus 1. The squared is outside the brackets. So here we end up by expansion or the distributive property. Minus 9 delta t. Minus 9 times minus 1 is plus 9. Okay, minus 4 comma 9. And remember, the whole expression is squared. So you have to FOIL or whatever your maths teacher calls it. So I'm taking the 30 over and I'm putting this 9 with it. 30 plus 9 minus 9 delta T. Okay, that's my first expression taken care of. And now delta t times delta t is delta t squared minus 4 comma 9 delta t squared minus delta t minus delta t is minus 2 delta t so this will become what plus 9 comma 8 delta t and then minus 1 times minus 1 is positive 1 times minus 4.9 is minus 4.9 
and then delta y equals 39 minus 4.9 is 34,1 minus 9 delta t plus 9,8 delta t is plus 0,8 delta t and then delta t squared it's only this one minus 4,9 delta t squared so we could call this one 1 and we could call this one 2 but at the moment they're both equal to delta y so we can then come and we can say 16 delta t minus 4,9 delta t squared equals all of this rubbish over here which is 34,1 plus 0,8 t minus 4,9 delta t squared. Now, do you see what I see? We've got minus 4,9 delta t squared on the left and minus 4,9 delta t squared on the right. So 16 delta t minus 8 delta t is 15,2 delta t equals 34,1. So delta t is 34,1 divided by 15,2. My calculator says to me it's something like 2,243. Okay, sure, that took forever, but it's not actually what they've asked for because they says calculate how high the ball is, okay? So we actually want delta y. So we're going to go back and use this expression probably again. Okay, how inconsiderate of them to make this long question. Okay, so if we go back here, if we go, we can go delta y equals vi delta t plus a half a delta t squared. And we're just going to substitute in this 2, 2243. So delta y equals 16 times 2,243 minus 4,9 squared. And if your calculator is behaving and you can work it out, you end up with delta y equals 11,23 meters. I got 11,23 meters when I used the answer operation in the calculator. I think the memo says 11,25. So if you just put in here 2,2 4 instead of 2,243 you'll end up with 11,25. So the trick here is knowing that this displacement here is negative in the negative direction and then everything else is much easier except for stupid quadratic equations.